Welcome inside the Holmes Convocation Center in Boone, where former Southern Conference rivals Appalachian State and Western Carolina match up for the 188th time. Good afternoon, gang. My name's Adam Witten. This is Ryan Goodson, best handles of any broadcast analyst that you'll find. App State and Western meeting here in Boone, where the Mountaineers are 2-4 and four on the season, lost their last time out to Charlotte. A young squad, but they're really propelled by one of their sophomores, Ronshad Shabazz. Shabazz, a leader for this team, coming into the game with 15 points a game. Uh, that's good enough for seventh in the Sun Belt Conference. Meanwhile, Western Carolina is led by Habubakar Matumbo. This team 2-5 and five so far. They were blitzed by Marquette last time out, but Matumbo is really a strong player for the Catamounts. Absolutely. He's their leader, 17 points. That's a career high against Marquette. He comes into the game leading in points, assists, and rebounds for the Catamounts. Fun game for these two teams renewing this rivalry. Fun game for the fans. App State and Western Carolina squaring off today. Good afternoon from the Holmes Convocation Center in Boone, North Carolina. We have Sunbelt basketball today, the Appalachian State Mountaineers and the UTA Mavericks. Hey gang, glad you've joined us this afternoon. My name's Adam Witt and this is Ryan Goodson. We've got a good one for you today. App State and UTA as we're getting close to the midway point of conference play. Let's start with the Mountaineers, Ryan. They've hit a rough patch. They've lost six of their last seven three in a row, but no doubt about it, they've got a budding star in Ronshad Shabazz. Ronshad Shabazz has been electric over the last two games, averaging 27 points over the last two, including a career high of 36 points against Georgia Southern. They'll likely need a great effort from him today against a very good Maverick squad. They started the year just one and three, but since then, they've won 14 of their last 16, and certainly one of the favorites in the league this season. It's a veteran group with a lot of talent. In the front court, you got the NBA prospect and preseason Sunbelt Player of the Year in Kevin Hervey, who's just tremendous. He scores well, rebounds well. And then in the back court, you got Jalen Jones, averaging 13 points per game and shooting at a 50% clip from the field on the season. Jones and Hervey, two of five returning starters to this year's Maverick squad. They bring back 87% of their scoring. Very talented team on the road today in Sunbelt action against the Mountaineers. From the Holmes Convocation Center in Boone, North Carolina, we've got Sunbelt Conference basketball. Tonight, it's the Appalachian State Mountaineers and the Texas State Bobcats. Hey, gang, my name's Adam Witten. This is Ryan Goods, and thanks for joining us tonight. we got two teams that were picked to finish toward the bottom of the Sun Belt this year, but one of them has been a huge surprise this season to this point. The Texas State Bobcats, 5-3 and three in league play. They're off to their best start in the Sun Belt. Their last win most recently on Saturday, came from the heroics of one of their rookies at Coastal Carolina. Nigel Pearson, he's been outstanding. The freshman averaging 13 points a game and no points this season have been bigger than his game winner in their last game against Coastal Carolina. They'll take on an Appalachian State team tonight that is still in a little bit of a rough patch. They've lost four in a row, seven of their last eight, most recently on Saturday, 83-67 against the UTA Mavericks. Now, despite the fact that they haven't been able to come up with a whole lot of wins in conference play, Ronshad Shabazz, their star, has continued to play terrific basketball and becoming a contender for Conference Player of the Year. Shabazz has been a lot of fun to watch, third best in the league in scoring. He's averaging 29 points and six rebounds over the last three. But for the Mountaineers to be successful tonight, they're going to have to get some contributions from his teammates. Shabazz is the only player for the Mountaineers that's averaging in double figures, and certainly head coach Jim Fox would like to see some of his players show a little bit more productivity if they want to get back on the winning track tonight. There's a three-way tie atop the Sunbelt Conference standings, and today here at the Home Center in Boone, North Carolina, we've got one of those three teams in action as the Georgia State Panthers face the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Hey gang, welcome inside the Home Center. My name's Adam Witten, this is Ryan Goodson. We've got two teams going in opposite directions. Georgia State's the hottest team in the league. It's won eight in a row, and they've been led by one of their freshmen, a star in this conference in Demarcus Simons. I know you really like his game, Ryan, and he was a, certainly a big factor in the Panthers' win over the Mountaineers last month. Absolutely, Demarcus Simons, he's a big time player, a guy I see whose game projects to the next level, to the NBA level. He was a four-star recruit, and against the Mountaineers on January 20th, third really lit him up 25 points 10 for 16 from the field he's averaging 12.7 points per game and shooting 58 percent from the field they haven't lost a conference game when simons is in the lineup he was hurt for a four game stretch earlier in the season meanwhile for the mountaineers we spent a lot of time in front of this camera talking about ron shot shabazz and i know jim fox has been waiting for another player to step up into more of a leading role that's been tyrell johnson of late and he had a big game in the first matchup between the panthers and the mountaineers he had a huge game with six for eight from the 
the field, including 10 free throws, uh, scored 22 points. Uh, he's netted double figures the last two games. And like you mentioned, Shabazz, Coach Fox, the Mountaineers have been waiting for someone to step up and put some points on the board. From the Holmes Convocation Center in Boone, North Carolina, it's a rivalry game, Sun Belt basketball on a Monday night as the Appalachian State Mountaineers host the Georgia Southern Eagles. Hey gang, thanks for joining us tonight. My name's Adam Witten, this is Ryan Goodson. App State and Georgia Southern, they go back a long way. Georgia Southern first place in the league, but the Mountaineers are coming off a win over another first place team in the league. That was Georgia State back on Saturday, and they had contributions from all over the floor in that one against the Panthers. It was a signature win for the Mountaineers. They were on fire from downtown. They shot 38% for the game from the three-point arc and knocked down 14 three-point shots. They got contributions all around. Jake Babick, Patrick Good, Amarius Logan, and their star Ron Shot Sabaz were all in double figures. Arkansas State, Georgia Southern, and Georgia State are all tied for first in the Sun Belt, and two of those teams have already lost here at the home center to Appalachian State. Georgia Southern, meanwhile, is struggling on the road. The Eagles have lost three in a row, and they'll have a chance to break that string here tonight. Back on Saturday against Coastal Carolina, their most recent loss on the road, they still got great production out of one of their outstanding guards in Ike Smith. Ike Smith, he's a breakout performer for the Eagles this year. He's been outstanding. He had 25 points in the loss on Saturday to Coastal Carolina. He also had 25 points in the last meeting against App State. He also leads the conference in scoring with 19.6 points per game. Between Ike Smith, Tukey Brown of Georgia Southern, and Ron Shad Shabazz of Appalachian State, the Sun Belt's top three scorers will all be on the floor tonight for this Sun Belt Conference game. From the Holmes Convocation Center in Boone, North Carolina, it's Sun Belt basketball on a Saturday afternoon. The Appalachian State Mountaineers and the Warhawks of ULM. Hey gang, welcome to our broadcast today. My name's Adam Witten, this is Ryan Goodson. Warhawks and Mountaineers squaring off here in the high country of North Carolina. We begin with ULM, which is at the bottom of the Sun Belt standings at one in 13. They've lost five in a row. The last three have been real gut punches for the Warhawks. Ryan, the last of which was truly, truly devastating. Such an emotional loss against their biggest rival on their home court. 3.8 seconds to go. They're up two points. They miss a pair of free throws and then Jonathan Stowe from Louisiana Lafayette gets the rebound, knocks down a buzzer-beating half-court shot for the win, still in the victory for Monroe at home. Uh, but some positive things to note. Uh, they have five players in double figures. First time that's happened since early December, as well as uh, shooting 62% from the field. That's a season best. And over 70% in the second half against the Raging Cajuns in that game. Meanwhile, for App State, looked like they had some momentum going a couple of weeks ago when they won back-to-back -back home games over first place Georgia State and first place Georgia Southern. Then they lost two on the road in Alabama. Certainly happy to be back here at the home center. Maybe nobody more so than Griffin Kinney. Uh, he's such a big part of this offense. His, his scoring punch inside creates things for the outside uh, for the Mountaineers. And he's been red hot over the last three games, averaging 17 points and six rebounds. Uh, he'll need to continue his play if they want to have a chance tonight. Griffin Kinney averaging double figures, one of two players for the Mountaineers, averaging 10 points or more this season. First meeting of the year between the Mountaineers and the Warhawks coming up. From the Holmes Convocation Center in Boone, North Carolina, it's Sun Belt basketball on a Monday night, the Appalachian State Mountaineers and the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana. Hey gang, welcome to our broadcast tonight. My name's Adam Winton, this is Ryan Goodson. As we begin the last week of the regular season in the Sun Belt, we begin with the Raging Cajuns. They found some momentum. They've won three in a row, the last two on the road for one of the best teams in the conference away from home. And those two wins have been in dramatic fashion. Absolutely. Just two games ago against Louisiana and Moreau, their rival with just a few seconds left left in the game. Jonathan Stova Jr. knocks down a half-court buzzer beater event on Saturday against Coastal Carolina. It was their leader, Frank Bartley, who knocked down two clutch free throws with 17 seconds remaining. And he's their leader, Adam Bartley, 15.7 points per game. That's good enough for seventh best in the Sun Belt. One of four players in double figures for the highest scoring offense in the Sun Belt Conference. Now, Appalachian State has lost three in a row following a loss on Saturday to last place ULM. But as they try to get a little bit of momentum before the Sun Belt Tournament next week, it certainly helps that 
maybe their best player is finding his rhythm again. Absolutely, he had struggled for a few games there, Ronshad Shabazz, but he played big on Saturday despite the loss. He had 20 points. He's third best in the Sun Belt at 17 points per game. They'll need him to play big tonight. They'll need him to play big as well as some of the other players to step up a little bit if App State wants to reverse this three-game losing streak. Meanwhile, Louisiana looks to keep the winning streak going as we get closer to tournament time. It's the final day of the regular season, and we welcome you to the home center in Boone, North Carolina. Sun Belt basketball between the App State Mountaineers and the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. Hey gang, thanks for joining us today. My name's Adam Witten, this is Ryan Goodson. Sunbelt Tournament coming up next week, so we talk about what's at stake for both teams in terms of seeding. For Coastal Carolina, they're trying to get above 500 overall in the regular season, and with a win today, if things shake out properly for the Chanticleers, they could finish in a tie for third in the Sunbelt standings. If they want to achieve that though, Ryan, what are they gonna lean on today? It's certainly going to be their guard play. Almost 80% of their total offense comes from their guards, and three in particular. They got Jalen Shaw at the point spot. He's averaging 13.9 points per game. Then they've got Elijah Wilson. He's the third all-time leading scorer at Coastal Carolina at 13.5 points per game. And then you got Siobhan Wiggins at 10.1. Those three are going to be big threats for Coastal Carolina today. Meanwhile, the Mountaineers, they're trying to avoid the bottom seed in the Sun Belt standings for next week's tournament. They're currently in 11th. Maybe more so important than seeding, though, the need to establish a secondary offensive threat for Jim Fox's team. Well, they'll need that tonight. They've leaned heavily on Ron Shad Shabazz. He's been tremendous, 16 and a half points per game. That's good enough for fifth best in the Sun Belt. But unfortunately, in their last game, he was the only one in double figures. And in, you know, I think it's important to know, Adam, their only wins in conference play have come when they've had at least three players in double figures. And App State is the only team in the Sun Belt with just one player on the year averaging in double figures.